spray by the <laughs> furniture. Yeah, like the, the furniture spray. That's on my. I was holding down the safer. right? We're trying to juggle being making Pesach and this year. Um, let's see. Nomi has a yard site. Nomi and I shall carry on first. First, first, first. Nomi is yard site. Nomi, say the name. And it's um Yochavid Chana Bat Zaev, my grandmother Oliver Shalom. She should have an Elias Neshama. Amen. She should be she should be a good zavener for you and Shemayim for you and your whole family. Amen. Thank you. And Lahavdil, the share is being sponsored today by uh, Rebecca Schenken um, for her birthday. But as I said, it's her English birthday tomorrow. But I'm sure it still has a big koyach that brought um, that brought her into the world. Um, and. <laughs> We're not going to be, um, I, I'm presuming we're either going to be flying and preparing ourselves for getting to her as well, but at the time of her English, of her Hebrew birthday, we are, um, I think Rebus and Silva is going to be a bit busy, so there we go. So Rebecca, happy birthday. Hi, happy birthday, Rebecca. Thank you for all the chasadim that you did for me when I was in London. It was my and pleasure. There's Rat Hashem, I'll be able to do it for you in Israel soon. Amen. 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 Come and rent a car and take me driving. I'll tell you exactly where I want to go. I'll um, make sure you let me know when you're going. I'll just sit on the back seat. We'll just, uh, we have to rent a few cars and hang around. I'll take you to all the places that nobody knows about. That's, a fun, that's, what, that's why it's fun to go with certain, some people, they know all these special places. I'll take you. Believe that they're best. Rat Hashem. And back to Shillong. Right. Shiva, we did already. Yeah, but you know what? I think I need to do it again. I'm ready. I'm ready. But I want to take you to all places that you never were also. That's okay. okay. So listen, you guys uh, in Chutzlars, everybody is is um, being very much on, on guard now because... Um, you know, they oh, they always say whatever people talk, they don't know what they're talking about. Whatever people who know who know what they're talking about, they don't talk. So, you know, we're having all kinds of interesting preparations for um for the next. Uh, we know what the prophecies say. We also know that there is a big machlokas now in the in the world of tzaddikim. You know, do the prophecies have to take place? The negative prophecies, do they have to take place or could we get away without the negative prophecies? And so the tzaddik that I that I go to, he doesn't want to hear about any negative prophecies. He doesn't want to talk about it. He doesn't want to verbalize it. He doesn't want to think about it. He says, just be good. Everything will be good and just pay attention to the good. Focus on the good. And yet, uh, you know, we just got a message that everybody should make sure that they have their you know, try to cook for Shabbos early, make sure that you have what you need in case whatever, because they just sent out a message. I'm not sure if it's true or not. Who's here now? Let's see who's here. Who can check this for me? Uh, nobody on, nobody's on yet. That's from here, Eretz Yisrael. But is anybody on from Eretz Yisrael? Let's see. I don't see anybody on from Eretz Yisrael. Um, they just sent a message that, that all the GPS systems are down in the country. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but we'll see. They're going to, you know, we know how to do things like that. Hashem is going to watch over us and protect us and show us how much he loves us. And um, now let's learn a little bit more about the Seder, about for next week, uh, two weeks of Seder. Um, one of the things that I want to talk about with the, with the we, were talking, we spoke about last week, right? Um, we spoke about the matzah last week, yeah? Somebody nod your head. Ginny, I can see you. Uh, did we talk about the matzah last week and this Thursday year? What's the intentions? That no, we have? no, no, we haven't. What did we last learn? Year. Last, huh? last week, we just we spoke about the transition from going into Pesach. And a Monday. Bit of a Rebetson, but Monday. We, haven't done, we haven't done anything of the Seder in this Thursday group. We did it last year, but we haven't done it this year. Uh, what, and what did you say, Jenny, just now? Monday. We learned together on uh, Monday, Monday about it. Yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, so let's go through the cover notes. 
that you're supposed to, the tefillah that you're supposed to have. Michal, are you, you know, in, 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 Marcel, are you here? Yeah, you are here because yes, you're on Michal's uh, thing. Ask her, ask her if she knows if her GP is, is her ways off. Do they have a car? Do they know if ways is off? Someone just sent me a message that ways is off, that all the GPS in the country is off. We'll see. Uh, you have to, everybody in, in the world has to dive in a little bit for us. You had to you. Were you just out and out and about? Were you in your car lately? Yeah. No. Okay. So, what? Yeah. We were out and about, but we didn't use waves. We didn't use waves. waves. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Everybody has to dive in. We have to dive in for, for everybody. We all have to dive in for each other. We don't know who to dive in for first. Are we more afraid of the for the Jews and Chutzlars, or are we more afraid for the? I'm not afraid here, but okay. Yeah. So. Um, um, what I would suggest you do, um, okay, let's do it now. Let's do the Kavanos of Matzah and Loror, and uh, I'm not going to get to the Kavanos of Yayin probably. So, the Matzah, the Matzah is the Dorais of food. I'm going to talk now quickly, listen quickly, and then you could you can listen on the um, on the YouTube again and review it. The Matzah is the Dorais of food that means like this. All the food that we have during the year, none of it is biblical except for Pesach. Now, in the times of the operational base Amikdash, so Pesach is, of course, biblical and a command, and everyone has to have it. And during the year, when we have an operational base Amikdash, so people have to bring korbanot, they have to bring offerings, they have to bring all kinds of filo to the base Amikdash. But right now, in lieu of an operational base Amikdash, we have to just eat once a year matzah, the first day to night, and the is both day to night. And so we have to have certain intentions. And you don't have to have it, but this is what I do, and it's very, very powerful, and it's a chaval, it's a, it's a pity not to maximize the situation of the Pesach Seder. Um, I'm sure that all of you have a Pesach Seder. If anyone in the UK doesn't have one, contact Revitson. So if anyone here in Arizona doesn't have one, or anywhere, contact your local Chabad. They'll take care of you. That was the Yerusha that the inheritance that Lubavitcher gave to the world is his or his people or his children that will take care of every Jew anywhere. Masa is uh, called the food of Oni, the food of uh, of the food of uh, iniquity, uh, of, of poverty, and. Uh, and um, slavery, that's what the masa represents, whereas wine represents wealth and power. So the Gemara doesn't, the Gemara says that matzah is also the kind of food that we eat it with a conversation because the word lechem oni, which means bread of affliction or bread of, or bread of poverty or weight, whatever the matzah is called, it's not called bread. But um, oni also means la'anot, anot ayin vav nun yud, Tav means to speak. So the the matzah, we we have our our Pesach Seder meal, which usually takes between six and eight hours. And that uh we talk a lot and we read the whole Haggadah, we read it out loud. You could read it in English, except for the brachot. You should you should read everything in Hebrew if you can. And if you can understand it even better, you have get by yourself an English uh, translation. Dalia, you have to mute yourself, sweetie. And so, but you're going to read the whole thing. You're going to read the story of the Yitzhak Mitzrayim, the story of every single year we remember how Hashem saved us. And this year we need Hashem to save us because we're in a dangerous situation and um, we need we need, we need Mitzrayim. We need the enemy to be vanquished. Nowadays, again, the enemy is the whole world against the Jewish people, except for those good non-Jews who are not against the Jewish people. But also, otherwise, it's the whole world against us. And that's, you know, that happened, it happened so many times in our history that we we know the feeling, you know, like, been there, done that, and Hashem will save us, because Hashem always saves us. Nevertheless, the matzah is the symbolic food that we eat on Pesach, and you have to have several intentions when you're eating them. So here goes. The first intention is the only, the matzah is the only food, matzah and maror, uh, and the times of the base of Mikdash, the, the Korban Pesach. 
they're the only foods that, that we make a bracha, asher kiddushan b'mitzvah sivanu le'echol al achilas masa. Did you ever make a bracha during the year on? Hashem, you commanded me to eat something? No, even if you're by, even if you buy a bris, even if you buy a wedding, even if you buy a suda's mitzvah, a, a meal that's accompanying a mitzvah, we don't we don't make a bracha. We we acknowledge you, Hashem, that you sanctified us with your commandments, and you commanded us to eat matzah, and you commanded us to eat maror. We don't we don't even have that with a yayin. We don't say a bracha asher kisha misusavetzivanu lishtot yayin. We don't say that because the bracha because the yayin is a is a derabanan. But the matzah and the moro is the oraisa. In other words, even in the fact that we don't have an operational base of mikdash, we are still eating matzah and moro as a Torah command. What do you, so the first intention that you have is, and this is the holiest intention, it's the simplest one, and it's the most elevated one. And I do suggest, and people tell me every year that they've done this at their Seder, I suggest that you say what I'm saying now out loud to everybody in your Seder. Now, if you're if you're by the seder of the rabbi of the shul and you're embarrassed to give instructions, okay, maybe he'll say that. But if not, if you can, then try to announce this. Tell everyone that right now we're about to eat the matzah, and we're doing that. Why? Why, why are we eating the matzah? Because Hashem commanded us in the Torah. Period. That's it. God is the creator. He is our God. He wrote. He gave us a Torah. The Torah has all the r- rules of how we're supposed to live. One of those rules is. On Pesach Seder night, we eat matzah. And that's why I'm doing this. It's a testimony to my belief, to my belief in the Torah. It's a testimony to my belief that every single mitzvah of God should ha- I have to accomplish, I have to do it. It's a testimony to my belief in God and his giving of, of the Torah. That's the first thing you have in mind when you make the bracha, when you're having the matzah. So while you're eating, now you've already made two bracha. Well, you actually, you washed your hands, you made on until you died. And then you made the bracha, or whoever is ruling, running the Seder will make the bracha. Blessed are you that you commanded us to eat. First we make hamotzi, regular hamotzi, and then, then the asher kiddushanim that you commanded us to eat. Martha. And Re- Rebecca, you have to mute yourself, sweetie. And then you're going to eat the matzah. While you're eating, you're, you're biting off the matzah and you're chewing it and you're swallowing it. And you need to have a big piece, not a small little piece, a big piece. And it should take you between four minutes and eight minutes from the time you begin to swallow till you've finished it. And while you're having that chewing, swallowing um, uh, ceremony or activity, you're going to be thinking. First thought is, I'm doing this because I'm doing this to show you my loyalty. I'm a good Jew. I keep the missile. Second commandment, Hashem, I'm doing this to remember that we were slaves in Egypt and you took us out. Third intention. And now, each, each of these intentions can take you as long as you want. Just make sure you get you accomplish them all. Third intention. The, the Zohar, the mystical literature, tells us that um, matzah is healing. It's a, it's a, it is the medicine that cures everything in a person. It cures you. Physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, psychologically, on every level. Matza cures you. It's a medicine. It's a divine medicine. Now, you have to believe that. If a person, you know, they there's a whole, there are so many studies on, um, on uh, people's belief system and the medicine that they take. If a person believes that the medicine that they take is going to heal them, then it has a much stronger uh, chance of healing them. Whereas if a person doesn't believe in the medicine that they're taking, or doesn't believe in the system of medicine, or doesn't believe in the meditations before, then it's going to minimize the effect on it. So you're going to believe that this is going to heal you and help you. Everybody who needs refuel shleim, anyone who has in their family someone who needs refuel shleim, give them matzah and say to them, this can heal you. But you have to believe it and you have to think about it. So while we're chewing and swallowing, we're thinking, Hashem, please heal me. Please heal every every cell in my body permanently. And from a whole year, I need to be strong from this matzah for the whole year until next year. Until next year, Satan. Heal me, strengthen me, balance me on whatever level you want healing in. That's a, that's the next kavana of the matzah. It heals you. The next kavana of the matzah, Chazal tell us that it is and it, it upgrades your emuna. It's the vitamin E. It's an immune vitamin. It upgrades your immune. And immune means believing in God, trusting in God, being God conscious. All of us in planet Earth need this uh, increase now because we're in we're under existential threat. Uh, you know this that the Shiites, which are the 
you know, the Muslim brand that Iran is, they believe that their Mashiach has about to come also. They have a uh, tradition saying that. And their belief is that um, the world has to be destroyed or has to be in a state of chaos before their Mashiach had come. So they have, they're, they're very happy to put the state in the world of chaos. And the Medrash tells us that Iran will be the final threat to the world, threatening to blow up the world. And you see that that's exactly what they're doing now. Every day it's coming closer and closer. So we need to upgrade our Amuna. You have to have stronger Amuna to, get, to be able to get through this time, to be able to get through this part of the Mashiach process. We have to trust Hashem. We have to know that everything Hashem does is perfect, perfect, perfect. We we can't imagine, we can't, we can't say it's comfortable. I don't have to say, Hashem, I love everything that you're doing, but I have to say everything you're doing is perfect, and I just need to get through it. I just need to be able to get through this. So help me to get through this. So Emuna, Emuna that everything that ever happens to you in your whole life was was absolutely coordinated by, by Hashem. Nothing is accident. Nothing is accidental. Everything is Hashem. That's called, that's matzah, the food of Amuna. So while you're chewing and your eyes are closed this whole time because you're chewing and eating and chewing and eating, you're asking Hashem in your mind. You're not allowed to talk now because you're chewing and you're eating. You're not allowed to talk. But in your mind, this is the only time, there's only two times a year where you can pray in your mind. The first time is now. The second time is during Birka Kohan and when the Kohanim bless us, they say the bracha in Shul Yilarecha Hashem Yishmerecha, that bracha. So we're allowed to pray in our mind for whatever blessings we want, but we don't speak them. And that's uh, the, the, when the Kohanim are blessing us, we just say Amen, Amen. Uh, sorry, after every one of the brachas that they say. So here you're in your mind, you're asking Hashem to help you with Amuna. Help me to have a better, purer, stronger Amuna in you. And not just you. You dive in, of course, you dive in for your husband, you dive in for your kids, you dive in for your grandchildren, you dive in for the whole world. He's on for everybody. Okay, that's the matzah. Those are the kavanahs with the matzah. And you have three opportunities to have all of these kavanahs. We eat the matzah three times. And each of these times have all of these intentions. The first time we eat the matzah is the first time. The second time we eat the matzah is when we make a sandwich between the matzah and the maror. And the third time is at the end of the meal after the afikoman. Uh, the afikoman is matzah. And so that's the third time we eat it. And every one of these times, you're having these intentions. Close your eyes and just have these intentions. And you know what? You never know. I once told somebody something that I thought they would, in, in my family, I thought that they would like say, oh, come on. Like, you know, there she goes again, whatever. And they didn't. They were very appreciative. So you never know how a person will be appreciative of exactly what you're advising them to do to maximize their state. Karen, you have to mute yourself, sweetie. Okay, the next is the Maror. Chazal tell us that the Maror is not what you think it is. Rebison, you're muted. Rebison, Silba. Sorry, on my on my host, it just muted everybody when I muted Karen. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. So I'll go back. Okay. So um, when I was a kid, we had for the for the maror, we had uh, horseradish root. The 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 yarkan, the green grocer, would come once a year. He knew exactly what time of the year we needed it, and he would bring this very un uh, unbeautiful root vegetable. Um, hairy and you know nowadays everything is genetic, genetically modified. I did not yet see the um, Hrein, the horseradish from this year yet, but I think they still have not yet modified it genetically, which is good. It means it's a healthy food. But you know it's hairy and brown and dirty and whatever, and you have to peel it and then you have to grind it or you have to cut it. And that's what we had when I was a kid. And then when I was in high school, and I came home, or a seminary, and I, no, I was in high school. Um, I came home and I told everybody at home, you're not supposed to have horseradish root. You're supposed to have lettuce. And the Gemara says that um, maror, the bitter herb, is lettuce, chasa, and that we should have a bitter lettuce, like 
you know, any of the endives or any of the romaines or any of the uh, ar arugulas or any of those lettuces, the bitters lettuce. And my whole, I met my grandfather, he should rest in peace. He looked at me like I was nuts, like, oh, an American, you know, an American, you know, American yeshiva girl. He said, that doesn't taste bad. That doesn't taste anything. But chrein, that tastes sharp. That tastes bad. How come, why is it that so many people use chrein? My theory is that, this is just a theory, my theory is that there was no lettuce in Europe 100 years ago. And in this time, in this season, so they use whatever harsh, sh harsh, sharp, difficult to eat vegetable they had, and that's why everybody starts using using the chrein. Yeah, that's really, right. That's right, Robertson. It was in uh, in Northern Europe. There was no chance of growing let lettuce of any sort at that time. They didn't exactly. have all the greenhouses and stuff we have now. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, so anyway, but now that we have everything, so now we're going to have. Also, we'll have lettuce. We'll always, everybody will always take as a memory, they'll take a little bit of the white horseradish that they uh, grind or that they have pieces of and put it with the lettuce because nowadays our lettuce is so genetically modified just to, to take out the bugs and took out all the flavor. There's no, no bitterness left in it. Nevertheless, that's what we're going to eat. We're going to remember how poor we were, how horrible life was, and then how Shem took us out. And therefore, we're going to put a little bit of the sweet haroset onto that maror to remind us that even the bitter has a has a, a silver lining of sweet. But the Gemara says something very interesting. The Gemara says that maror tastes bad when you're eating it, but it's very, very good for you. It's very good for your digestion. It's very good for your overall health. It's very good for your skin. It's good for your hair. It's, it's a very good product, uh, maror. All the lettuces are very, very good for you. And so the Gemara says it goes in harsh, but it's good for you. And that's how all difficulty is. It feels harsh, but we have our, our amuna. We already ate our matzah. We uh, just to check, should we use lettuce? Yes, use lettuce. And uh, put a little bit of horseradish in it. But yes, use lettuce. And keep in mind to this idea that the, the lettuce is sharp or bitter or whatever, but it's healthy for you. The idea, again, being Yisurim and suffering is bitter. It's not easy for us, but it's good for us. We don't understand how does that system work. There are certain systems in the world we understand, like electric electricity. We understand that system. We understand magnetism. We understand uh, uh, certain things in the in the body, in the biology of the person. We do not understand how Yisurim, suffering, fixes our soul, other than say, well, we, we become more of a compassionate person. Uh, we become more of a sympathetic um, person, but we don't see the dynamic of how is it like vitamin Y, vitamin Yisur, Yisur means suffering. Uh, how does that work? We don't understand the system, but nevertheless, that's what Mara represents. And we have to say, Hashem, I'm going to now think, and this is what you think about while you're eating the Mara. The Mara takes much less time to chew and eat, so you have to think quickly. Um, and the idea is. You think about all the hard things that you had in your life. Yeah, think about all the hard things you had in your life. And then say, Hashem, I love you and thank you for everything that you gave me. It was hard, but somehow it's going to fix me. Not just that, but the the um, the Reb Son HaKoyin from Lublin tells us about the word Maror. Now he also, because he was in Lublin, he had, uh, you know, he only had sharp, uh, sharp, right? He didn't have uh, lettuce. And so he said, that he brings a teaching that says that maror is not just bitter, but it's harif. Harif means sharp, and amot and maliach and chamutz and maliach is I say chamutz in English, like pickled, pickled and salty, and it's a it's a sharp food. Now that's what it's supposed to be, and that's what real horseradish root is. And so Reb Tzadik says that not just is it healthy, but it actually stimulates your appetite, and everybody knows that. You know, people will have, let's say, as an appetizer, they'll have pickles and olives, right? In olden days, when they would put on a table in a restaurant, you know, an appetizer, like a pre, you know, they would put you put free bread on the table. And this is an olden day restaurant. So I don't go to restaurants, but in olden days, I remember on the table, when you would come sit down, they would put a basket of bread and um, some pickles and maybe a high class restaurant, some olives. And uh, some pick. If you're an Israeli, they have pickled vegetables on the table. Now, of course, they'll put on all kinds of all the salat and also, but pickled stimulates the appetite. Salty stimulates your appetite. 
And so moreover, he says, stimulates the appetite. But well, the appetite for what? Not for food, but for continued growth, continued ex expansion of your soul in your body, continued development of your soul. That's what Mara represents. It represents a vegetable uh, that reminds us of difficulties that we've had, sharp things that we've had, um, salty things that we've had. And, and when talking about sharp people in our life, sharp, sharp situations, sharp challenges, salty challenges, whatever. But it's supposed to stimulate us to um, not to live, to 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 want to accomplish. That's what it's supposed to do. So have that in mind also. Please, Hashem, let me have energy. Let this moreover, even though nowadays, again, the lettuce nowadays is such a bland food. And the lettuce experience is like just really bland. But the consciousness of it and the and the and the idea behind it and the food that it was supposed to be is supposed to be a stimulant that will and that's why perhaps you can make a real you know take the mara or put some chiroset in it and put some uh, sharp uh, horseradish in it and then roll it up and eat that your lettuce right and you have to again have a big big piece of that you have to I'm sure you're going to have some you know you'll you'll buy the safer the peso safer that will tell you the amounts, because this is again, this is not stam eating, just, not just eating. This is a Torah misobservance eating, and therefore it is ruled, it has the rules of the base of Mikdash. And the base of Mikdash had measurements for every single thing the base of Mikdash did was measurements. And so we have to measure our, our matzah and measure our, our maror. You do not have to measure the amount of chocolate you eat. You do not have to measure any of the other kinds of foods. You do have to measure the, the wine, the matzah, and the maror. And so um, you're going to take a big piece of that lettuce and you're going to roll it up with whatever fillings you want, meaning just a little bit of chayrosin and a little bit of the chrein that will give a sharp and a sweet taste to it. The idea is, again, you're in your mind. The next thing that you're thinking in your mind, Hashem, I want to live. I want to have, I want to have um, ambition. I want to have an account. I want to have... I want to have goals and I want to, there are certain things I still want to accomplish this coming year. I want to want, I want to want to live. That's the moral. So again, before you eat tomorrow, you say, and the idea is I am doing this because Hashem, you told me to eat more and I'm going to do it. Whether I understand it or not, whether I have, I have intention or not, I'm still going to do the moral. That's the first kavana, but and as I said before, by any mitzvah. Second kavana is you're going to remember all the bitter things that happens to you in your life, and you're going to say to Hashem, "I have to believe that somehow that was good for me." And, and you could also say, "Please don't don't give me any more bitterness." You could say that I don't want any more bitterness. I had enough already, and now I want to, you know, want to just have everything good so that I can serve Hashem. Um, then you're going to think about that the more is a is an appetizer to try to stimulate you and you want to have a stimulus for life. You want to have more life force that tomorrow. Okay. Um, Reb Sadaka Kohen says something very interesting that I, I say this just once a year because it's too really hard for us to hear it, but I'll say it anyway. He says that by eating matzah at the Pesach Seder with, this, with the right intentions, what you're doing is you are upgrading and actually consecrating, making holy all the foods of the upcoming year that are in this, that are in the same category as matzah. Matzah, remember, is wheat. So all grain, all legumes, all growing food, you uh, are are making holy the, for the whole upcoming year. In other words. Today, whatever you eat today is still receiving the holiness of last year's matzah. So this year you want it to be even stronger because did you feel it this year? Maybe not. So now you're going to have a stronger intention at the pace of Seder so that it'll, it'll be in your consciousness to eat to eat with consciousness and to eat with um, purpose the whole upcoming year. Uh, so that's all the grains. Then the maror upgrades and sanctifies and makes holy all the vegetables for the upcoming year and perhaps also even the fruits for the upcoming year. And then the 
wine, by the way, would also upgrade all the upcoming years drinks and probably fruits also because wine is a fruit-based food and now he says and when you eat the carbon pesach when you eat the the piece of roasted lamb that upgrades and sanctifies and elevates all the upcoming years meat products and animal products now what do we do we don't have now the edible carbon pesach Right now, we don't eat the carbon pestle. So how are we going to upgrade and elevate and sanctify all of our animal products, specifically meat, meat of animals, right? So Reb Sadak says, like this, it's shocking. He says, it's probably better not to eat meat, except if it's Shabbos or a holiday or Rosh Chodesh or a bris or a wedding or a mitzvah. Probably better off not to eat meat. And he says, because you don't know how to have the right kavanot. You don't have to, you don't know how to have the right intentions. Wait, don't get scared because I'm going to show you how to do this in a second. But he says, you don't know how the tzaddikim, only the tzaddikim know how to have intention when they're eating meat. Regular people don't. So you're probably better off refraining from meat. So now we, we know that that's not going to work for most people. And so we have to figure out what is it that I can do when I eat a fleshic meal. And, um, probably by extension, um, all animal products. That means flesh and fish and eggs and dairy and all animal products, right? All Everything comes from an animal. Um, we have to make, make sure that because we're eating a food that we don't have the ability to elevate it because we're, we're not saying the bracha on meat. Asher ki nishanu carbon pesah. We don't have that bracha. We haven't had that in almost 2,000 years. So how do we eat meat? So he says, make sure that you at least make a good bracha. First he says, try to refrain from meat. And if you're going to eat meat, eat it at a situ at either a holiday or a suddhas mitzvah, a meal of a mitzvah, associated with a mitzvah. But if you're going to eat meat because you need to for health or for whatever reasons, then make sure you make a good bracha, a, a good bracha shahakol before, and make sure that you make a good bracha Lorena Fashon afterwards, and then even better than that, either learn some Torah or do something, um, do a mitzvah with the energy that you receive from that meat. And that's the consciousness. That's called eating with consciousness. I'm not just eating because I'm hungry and someone just served me a hamburger. I'm eating because I, I need to eat, and this is what's available, but I have to elevate that meat, and the meat is the highest level. Meat and wine are the highest level, and oil, olive oil, are the high, have contained within them the highest level of holiness. Meat has the highest, then comes wine, then comes olive oil. And so you want to make sure that you're maximizing the spiritual energy of that. So you're going to in the times of the base, I make sure she had no problem. You just ate your carbon Pesach and all the upcoming meat for the whole entire year was elevated. That's why they used to eat a lot of meat in those days. Nowadays, um, we don't have the carbon Pesach yet and maybe we'll still have it this year. He really could. Every single year I get uh, there, there are notifications put out on all the religious websites. If anybody wants to sign up for carbon Pesach, you send them like I don't know twenty shekels just as a as a um, symbolic uh, you know payment, and then if Mashiach comes and they actually make a carbon pesach, you actually have you already took care of that. You don't have to run run around trying to find somebody who's going to do a carbon pesach for you. Okay, so, but the idea is that in Pesach Seder, we have the ability to upgrade and sanctify and elevate uh, and de-physicalize our food. What does it mean to de-physicalize? So did you ever eat a meal and then afterwards you just wanted to take a nap? That oftentimes happens Shabbos afternoon in the winter when you have it, when it's cold out and you make a big hat meat and potatoes and barley and beans chillin a real heavy duty right and then and it smells so good and you come in and you're so cold and it's after shul and you're hungry and now you sit down and you wash and you have your your your, your meal and you eat your chillins and so 
um, what happens after usually after that? You just feel like you were knocked out by a bulldozer, a 10 ton, whatever, and you just need to put your head down and sleep. Because the body, when you eat that heavy, heavy food, the body says, oh no, she did it again. Why did she eat that? Look how much energy I'm going to need to digest this meal. She better go to sleep because I have no patience and I have no extra energy to, to do anything else. She can't walk around. She can't. She shouldn't do anything. Just sit down and you and and save all the energy. Conserve all the energy to digest this meal. It's going to take me a couple of hours to do that. And that's the source of a Shabbos afternoon nap. And that's also why I think that by certain people they didn't have fish Shabbos day because they wanted to just have a shulin right away. I don't know if that's true. I just made that up. But uh, in my, in my house when I was a little girl, that's how we felt. Like we just. We just want the children. It's like, don't give me any. And Mother She Should Rest in Peace was very progressive. Now I understand she was progressive. Then I didn't know that. And uh, she gave a salad first and a piece of a fish and you know, lighter foods. And I just we just wanted the children. Like forget all that stuff. Okay, so um <coughs> um so that's the intentions you're having. Uh, while you're having a Pesach Seder. The entire Seder, you can be davening out loud. You can daven under your breath. If you come to a part of the Seder that's, that affects you, that that inspires you, that something wakes you up, then just talk to Hashem right there and then. Even if you fall a little bit behind, you know, there's no there's no timeline, there's no deadline, there's no anything. You, you know, um, you can take the Seder as long as you want. We, we of course, try to eat uh, the Afikomen by Chatzot. And since, I don't know, you guys never changed the clocks. I, I, maybe you did. We changed the clocks. So it's, Chatzot is now like one. Nine. We have changed the clocks, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. And anyway, your time zone is totally different. I never, I remember I was by you. It was, it was crazy late. Didn't get sundown. And the, the morning started very late. It's, uh, whatever. But, you know, try to make your Seder uh, meaningful for you. And um, some people, some women especially, um, are very martyristic, meaning I want to make sure everybody's having a good time and everybody's eating and everybody has what they need and everybody. The thing is like this. The Seder is not about food, even though the mitzvahs are about food. But it's not about the meal. It's just not. The meal should be minimized. The meal should be simple and light, whatever you have for the meal shouldn't be heavy because you still have to eat the afikoman and you, then you want to stay up. You don't want to, uh, if you if you had a heavy meal, see, I'm tired because I'm up from early, but and every, whenever I look on the screens, it just makes me yawn. I think this, whatever. Anyway, so, sorry. Um, you don't want to have a heavy meal because after the Seder meal, you don't want to fall asleep. You want to stay up for the next hour or two and sing the songs and talk more of miracles that happen to you. Who knows? Listen, ladies, by the time the Seder starts this year, we we'll have no idea what kind of miracles we're going to be recounting. I hope we're going to all say, I hope we'll all have amazing miracles to talk about. I hope we'll have, as a nation, uh, you know, a big miracle. They know our holidays. They know what we're celebrating. You remember a few years ago on Pesach at the Seder in the hotel, there was a huge pigua in a, and it was terrible, terrible losses because they know our schedule. Just like we know their schedule. We know that tomorrow is the last Friday in their, in their month of uh, supposedly doing penitence. Supposedly they're doing tshuva whole month. They're fasting and supposedly doing tshuva, but I think they're just getting their claws ready to dig in to us, so, but anyway, we're going to make our Seder this year amazing, it's going to be amazing, and we're going to, we're going to all feel the power of the food, and, and, and then you're going to do something that I, I always forget to say it every year, because when I, before pays like, my head is not in teaching right now, and this is my last class of the, of the Zoom era uh, for the next couple of weeks, and uh, my head is really in the on the floor, you know, with uh, stuff that's that I'm cleaning. But I will tell you. So therefore, I forget to tell you this every single year. And this year, I'm not. One of my students reminded me, and I'm thanking her for it. Every single every single one of you, when you get your afikoman, both the first night and the second night, uh, someone's going to give you a big piece of afikoman. Now that piece of afikoman should have 
a little piece of the community matzah, right? In other words, on the Pesach Seder table, there are three matzah that the leader of the, the Seder is, that's the matzah that he's like, we have, when you make hamosi on Shabbos, you have two challah, right? And the, and, the, and the person distributes the challah, right? So we have three matzah. And, um, and if you have everybody, if everyone has their own three matzo, that's great. Then you can do it your own. But if no, but if you just have the commu the person who's leading the seder has the three matzo, then that person is going to have to give you the afikoman. Now the afikoman is coming from the middle matzo that we broke it in half. The larger half we put on the side for the afikoman for later on. Now that's half. A little bit larger than half of a of a, of a big round matzah, right? Now, ha however many people at the seder, they have to have they have to have a, a piece of that, a little piece of that afikoman matzah, in addition to supplementing it with other matzah, because the matzah everyone has to have a shear, an amount of matzah. They have to have a half or a three quarters of a of a of a, of a, of a I don't know whatever the shear that they're going to tell you. Why we have a bigger shear here? Of, of a uh, three quarters of a, of a of a hand matzo, I think, or half of a hand matzo. Whatever it is, there's not enough in the in the leader of the seder's um, afikoman to give everybody a uh, big piece. So he's going to give everybody a small piece, a small piece. Whatever it is from the afikoman, and then you're going to supplement it with other matzo, other shmur matzo that's on the table. Whatever it is from the afikoman that you were given that came from the main afikoman in the middle of the table, that half that was broken off, save a piece. It could be a tiny half a centimeter. Save yourself a piece by both seders and for us by the first seder, by the, the only seder. Keep that piece of matzah with you all year long. I keep it in a plastic bag, in a napkin, in a plastic bag. That matzah is specially potent during the year also for medicine. So whenever anyone doesn't feel well, you take a little tiny crumb of it and you put it into a, whatever you eat it. Save it. Now, if you have, if everybody has, if you have a big afikoman, in other words, let's say you have two people at the Seder. Let's say there's you and your husband at the same. Well, let's say there's three people at the same. And so you have the big round matzahs, right? And the middle matzah was broken into two pieces. The larger was put on the side. And that larger matzah, you only have to divide that. You only have to divide that with two or three people. You don't have a lot of people there. Or let's say you have your own three matzah. You do your own Pesach Seder. Everybody at the, at the Seder table is going to have their own three matzah. Then you have... A whole half of, of, of an afikoman, you have a big piece. So put aside a nice chunk of it. Now, you have to make sure that you eat enough of a shear. You have to eat enough so you're going to supplement that with other matzah, other shmur matzah. But keep yourself a piece of afikoman for the whole upcoming year. I just finished eating mine every year. I eat it at the Pesos, at the Purim Suda, because we don't eat matzah after Purim. <clears throat> so keep that afikoman. Don't forget, don't let it get lost. And um, and if you mix it up right away, put it into a into, into a tissue and put it in your pocket, or put it someplace so that you have afikoman for the upcoming year as a healing food. And I use it. I'm telling you, I use it now. Hashem doesn't make magic. Hashem makes things b'derech hatever. And so it's not like you know, Hashem didn't give the afikoman the same chemical properties as, um, let's say, uh, you know penicillin or antibiotic. You take penicillin, you right away feel better. Your blood count right away changes. They can see that physically. You take the afikoma, a little teeny, tiny crumb of afikoma, you don't necessarily see. But what, is it, what does it do to you? First of all, I'm telling you that it will change your blood structure. It will change your body. It will heal you. But also it will remind you to dive into Hashem because why am I taking a little piece of matzah instead of a, in addition to a, a antibiotics or whatever it is that a, per that a person takes. Because I believe that the matzah is going to heal me because that's what the Torah tells us. So right away when you have that mindset, you're in a different place altogether in terms of healing. Because Hashem tells you, Hashem tells us, don't forget about me. Don't think that just because you're going to, you know, you're going to take, 
we have these kinds of medicines available or whatever procedure that's available. Don't think that you can do anything without God. So that's it. We're going to have the masa. We're going to remember to keep the masa. And we're going to use it, utilize it all during the year. Sometimes what I do is I put a little tiny crumb of that matzah into a giant chicken soup. Now the whole chicken soup is healing. Besides the fact that chicken soup is always healing. But now I just upgraded it because I put a little tiny piece of afikoman matzah in there. You can do that with anything. Sometimes I put, so I save a lot of matzah from the, from the year. Just letting you know my tricks. I save a lot of matzah. I save from the afikoman. Then I save from the supplement of the afikoman. Then I save from whatever matzah was left on the table that was from the original three matzahs. I, I have them, the afikoman I save separately and the other matzahs I save separately. And all year long, I'm sprinkling matzah into every food that I make. Um, I put it into cookies sometimes, cookie dough. I'll just grind up a piece of matzah and I'll just put it in. Nobody knows, but I know. And I'm davening for anybody who eats my food that it should be healing for them. Okay, I want to tell you one more thing in the Haggadah. In the Haggadah, in, when you read the Magid, so you know we have the steps. right? So Magid means that's the bulk of the speaking part of the Haggadah. When you read the Magid, if you if you um, pay attention, and really people, we should, on Shabbos, it's a long Shabbos, it's the first long Shabbos here. Uh, is it our first long Shabbos? Maybe our second? I think it's our second. Whatever it is, it's already long Shabbos, it's long Shabbos days, and so you're able to do everything. You can take a nap, you can go to shul, you can come home, you can eat, you can take a nap, and you can still speak to people, and you still have time to read and to learn and to say to them. So usually in the wintertime, you have to crunch all that together. So take a look, open up one of your Haggadahs, take out the Haggadah. Or if you don't have a really good Haggadah, meaning with commentaries and stories and and the farshim, and if you don't have one of those, go out and get yourself one, and charge it to seed. Uh, Rebbe and Dove will get get you a, a, a discount at whatever bookstores you have there. Buy yourself a really really meaningful haggadah, and start reading it. Start reading the English. Start reading, it, and you see how the psukim, how the magid is, um, just quoting psukim, psukim that prove other psukim that are coming from other psukim. And the famous pasuk that we say when we when we the the Haggadah tells us when we couldn't when we couldn't bear it any longer, we say we, we when we couldn't bear the the servitude the slavery any longer, the pasuk in Torah says Vanitzak el Hashem alokenu. We screamed out to Hashem. So when we say those words Vanitzak. So say that. Scream at Hashem. Now, I don't mean scream, like shriek, because everyone will think you're crazy. Unless everyone at the Seder is going to do that. Unless they all know this secret. If they don't all this, know this secret, then you just do what Rabbi Nachman calls, we spoke about this last year, a, 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 a strong, silent scream. Rabbi Nachman says, scream at a scream from the deepest part of you. And we, and we screamed, and then Hashem heard us, and he redeemed us, and he rescued us, and he elevated us. So so scream from the... I hope that we're not going to have to scream. I hope that we're going to be celebrating, celebrating this Pesach. Celebrating like we haven't celebrated since the times of Shlomo HaMal, since the times of Moshe Ben. That's how I hope we'll be celebrating. But last year, when we said Vanitzak, we screamed, we screamed inside, we said it out loud, and we screamed out to Hashem, and a, a voiceless screaming of, we just can't anymore. We just can't anymore. And then Hashem will help us and answer us. So just like on the Pesach Seder, we have two elements of poverty, and riches, right? Poverty is the the de the the potato in the salt water, and the maror, and even the matzah. And the riches is leaning, and the wine, and the beautiful table, and the beautiful settings that we make, and the beautiful clothing that we wear, etc. So too, in the seder, we have two kinds of verbalizations. 
we have the tefillah, and we also have the songs. And you see how they're both balanced back and forth. The tefillah, the whole entire market, and then the, the eating, the food, is serious. And, is, and even though we try to get kids involved, but, you know, it's a serious recounting of our history. But then at the end, we sing the songs. And all of those songs, you should know something. All of, the, all of us, I mean, I don't know about you, but I remember when I was a kid, that was my favorite part, was the songs in the beginning with the Manishtan and all the songs that we learned in school, and the songs at the end, in the middle, you know, when you're a little kid, even when you're a teenage kid, you sort of like, wait for the songs. Anyway, the song, every one of the songs that we sing at the Seder table is a Kabbalah song. Is Kabbalistic. So you should know. You're not just singing who is one, who knows one, I know one, right? It's a deep, deep things. So sing the songs with tremendous happiness and joy. I hope you could. I hope we could all sing the songs with happiness and joy. Um, and great and gratitude and wonderness, wonderment, and you know, like now we're throwing. Now we throw up our hands when we think about what's going on in the world and how much anti-Semitism. And, and people are not ashamed anymore to be anti-Semites. And they're not ashamed. Your, your policeman, right? That policeman said, maybe a swastika isn't, a, isn't an anti-Semitic uh, symbol. You, you know, you're, you're UK people over there. The whole, and we, we throw up our hands and say like, what are you crazy? What is this crazy world? So we, we throw up our hands in frustration but I hope we're going to be throwing up our hands in joy like, and saying stuff like, how did we ever get to here? Like, how did this happen in a good way? It's so amazing what's happening. Yesterday, not yesterday, I saw this already a few days. There was a boy, uh, sadly, because of the because of the lack of proper equipment, many of our soldiers lost their eyesight because of shrapnel that went into their eyes and so yesterday they were they showed it yesterday and they showed it two days ago also um the israelis uh the jews uh our, our country one of our many contributions to the universe is that we are um hashem gave us gifts of brilliance innovation innovate innovation innovation um kindness and generosity and so we um we make all we have all kinds of surgeries that they made on this boy i think he had six surgeries on his eyes and now he could see he needs he needs these special glasses whatever but he could see them everybody saw that yesterday and then they first they first showed it two days ago but then yesterday they showed a more open they showed more of that video I don't think there's anybody who could see such a thing and, and not cry from happiness of how this boy's sight was restored. Hashem helps us to be brilliant. Hashem gives us brilliance. And we share it with the world. So I would like to say to all the anti-Semites, uh, you don't have my permission to use my uh, my medical, uh, Jewish medical uh, information. I would like you not to use anything Jewish. And... Uh, and that's it. I'm not going to be so, maybe I shouldn't be like that, but I'm feeling right now like I don't want any, any, any anti-Semites to benefit from any Jewish wisdom. So please stop using every single thing that a Jewish person ever, ever invented because we invented them to make mankind better and you're just trying to make mankind worse. Anyway, so there's Baruch Hashem and Simchas happening now and we have Pesach to look forward to. There's a big debate here going on in Israel about whether the Israelis should have, you know, they went into, they, they destroyed the Iranian uh, something in Syria, the, the uh, embassy or whatever. And now Iran is threatening to, you know, they, they said that the Iranian embassy, even though I heard that it was just the house next door where the Iranian people were living, but whatever it is, Iran says that that's a direct, that's like attacking Iran on its Iranian land. Now we've done that before anyway. We've, we've sent all kinds of things to Iran. But um, but they're threatening us and we're saying, and there's a debate in Israel, should we have done that? Should we not have done that? 
The bottom line is that Amuna 101 says Hashem is running the Shonen. Even though it looks like this person's making a decision and that army is making a decision and this, Hashem is running this show. And we just have to say again and again, over and over again, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. Hashem Melech, Hashem Malach, Hashem Yimlach, and you can say it with Hashem's name. All day long, just strengthen your amuna in God. God is doing this, coordinating it. We can't possibly understand, but he's doing it because he loves us. And he's creating our redemption, as exactly what the Mejish says. The Mejish says that Iran is going to make the whole world scared. They're going to threaten the world. And all the countries of the world are going to be taking counsel, one with the other, what to do, what to do. And the Jewish people will also be frightened. And Hashem says to the Jewish people, why are you frightened? All of this I'm doing for your redemption. So that's what we're, we're living this, we're living through this right now. So Bezrat Hashem, everything's going to be redemption. That's what we want. We don't want just to be quiet now. We can't, we see the whole world's not going to go back for redemption. No, 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 the whole world's not going to go back to quiet. We want the redemption now. We want Mashiach now. We're all becoming Chabadnikim in terms of just saying, we sing that, singing that song. We want Mashiach now, right? However, it works out not to be afraid, not to be afraid. And you know what? Even the tzaddikim who have to bring Mashiach, they shouldn't be afraid either. They should just do their job. We all have to do our job. So Naomi, your grandmother, should have an alias neshama and Mazel Tov to Rebecca on her birthday and many more. Everybody here should have simchas and everybody here should have so much money that you can sponsor the next year for the next a million years, but we're not going to even need it because we're going to all have money, so we're not going to need sponsorships. So we're going to be buying each other presents. We're going to be buying all the boys, and all the Jewish boys in the world, fill in and mezuzahs. And we have a lot of use, a lot of use for our money, and we're going to all be using it as Rosh Hashem for good things. And now I'm going to wish you all a chag kosher b'sameach because next week is already, you know, we have to start getting serious with our cleaning and with our arranging, with our shopping. So I was just, have to tell you my Thursday Osher Ad story, because that's right, where we all met. And in Osher Ad today, I was reminiscing with one of the women, and we were reminiscing about how Cheaper Coal used to be the, the largest store in this whole entire area. Now it's like so much smaller than it's eclipsed by all the gigantic supermarkets. And we were in, uh, on Thursday morning, my friend drives me back from shopping, and we were stuck in the parking lot, because we have so many cars and everybody was trying to be on their best behavior, you know, only honking 10 times instead of 20 times because everybody has to get in and get, and get out. But we're rich ladies. It, it, we're so rich here. And we have to quote the, 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 the Chazonish, the Chazonish, when I asked him 80 years ago, if he thinks that this is it, that, Mashiach is, that we're in the Mashiach process, he said, we have to wait 70 years, 75 years to see if it keeps progressing. See, here we are, 80-something years later, after the Chazonish said this, and we're rich, cars, parking, no parking lots, everything, everything in uh, in overflow in the supermarkets, overflow of products, overflow of fruits and vegetables. And it's true, I will tell you that the prices went very high. Prices did go, did go higher this year. I'm not sure why, maybe because of the... You know, they were they were not able to import everything, or maybe because of the route that they have to take that, you know, they have to get get away from Yemen, so they have to take a longer but uh you know, boat ride here, whatever it is, the prices went higher, but we have tons of stuff. And so we're getting ready to celebrate a very, very momentous um Pesach. And the families of the Khatufim should be comforted. Amen. Amen. Anyone who's still, any one of the Chatufim who is still alive should be rescued. Amen. Um, and, and all the Chayalim should be safe Amen. and should be successful. And Amen. all the Pitsuim, whoever is uh, whoever is uh, in the hospital should have a complete refuah shleima. And get rid of the, uh, let them go to their own hospitals. I don't need to pay yeah. my taxes for their hospitals. But the world has to see that we are compassionate. We are godly. We are the godly people. We're the people of God. 
We're God's chosen people. God gave us his Torah. We've been loyal to his Torah. We gave the world the Ten Commandments without our giving us our, our giving them and sharing them the ten with the, sharing with them the Ten Commandments. They would all be, you know, they would have been they would have been murdering each other. The world would have been a, a crazy uh Hefka zone. But the world will recognize the goodness of the Jewish people and the the and the evil people will be will be outed out and will be compensated. And the Jewish people, we all are trying our best. We're all trying to try to try. And Hashem takes it until 10 levels. The, the Kaskar Rebbe said, if you try to do mitzvah, that's good. If you do a mitzvah, that's best. If you try to do the mitzvah, but you're held back, it's good. If you try to try, that's also good. If you try to try to try, until 10 levels of trying, until, until, the, the, until, until 10 levels of depth into my soul does Hashem give us credit for. I'm sure every single Jew is in that contingency. We're all in the same nation and we all try to 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 try or to wish to want to to wish to want to be in Israel. You want to live in Israel good. If you live in Israel best. You want to live here good. You wish you wanted to live in Israel okay. You wish you wanted to want to want to Right? It's, you're here. It means you're here. It means you're connected. Okay, so you know, ladies, I love you a lot, and I look forward to the sheer a lot every single week, and I'm um, going to miss you for the next two or three weeks, but we're all going to be very, very busy, and you know I love hearing from you, and you always and you text and you send messages, so feel free to do that. Give me, a, give me some, you know, um, you know, have patience if I don't answer right away. Um, and Bezrat Hashem I'm so glad we're Jewish I'm so glad to be a Jew I'm so proud and I'm so privileged to serve the master of the universe to serve the creator of everything what a privilege we have what a gift we have what a gift of Olam Hama we have to look forward to of eternity what love has Hashem given us Hashem has given us so much love He loves us so much just focus on it and Bezrat Hashem, uh, we'll see each other. Let me say hi to everybody. Don't go off. Wait, don't go off. Oh. Hi, Rebison Dove. Thank you. Hi, Marcel. And Michal's um, <laughs> computer. Hi, Naomi again. Thank you for your Rabbi Shereva and Aliyah's Neshama. Hi, Aviva. And hi, Dalia. And thank you for all you do for us. And hi, Emma. Stop popping off. You're all popping off. Or well, maybe you're not. Even if I say hello to you, don't pop off. Hi, uh, Pauline. And hi, <laughs> Emma. And hi, Geraldine, and hi, Jenny, and hi, Haley, and hi, Karen, and hi, Katie, and hi, Mrs. K, MK, and hi, Nomi again, and hi, Rebecca Schenken, happy birthday, and hi, Shella, every year we're getting younger and younger, and hi, you the Batya, and hi, you the Sugarman. Okay, ladies, now you could do whatever you want. <laughs> I am going to get back in to what I need to do. Shabbat shalom, good Shabbos, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. As of Hashem, we should all be together. Amen. 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 We will be. We will be. Hayley, Hayley, are you doing half Russia now, Hayley? No. Okay, you, you're already in Pesach mode. We've got you have a bracha Shabbos, so... Uh, after Rosh Chodesh, we start by Ezra. We have a young man by the name of, there we go, making together with Dalia Resnick. And we, uh, Dalia's even coming to Golders Green for Shabbos. And Gabe, um, Gabe Chait is, um, got married, I won't say married, got, love, got married um, last night um, to Sivan Jackson. And uh, Baruch Hashem. So we and Sivan Jackson is a student of mine. What are you talking Jackson about? A student. I forgot Midrash Tehila. There we go. So we are making Sheva Brachas for your student. And it was a wow. beautiful. You know? I'll, tell you, I'll tell you a funny story about Sivan. Listen to this. It's a funny story, not about her. Somehow the Ministry of Health got her phone number mixed up with my phone number. And every time she did it, it left the country or came back in because it was time of Corona, I would get a message. Sivan, you know, your test came out fine. Everything's good. Like, I would get her messages on my phone. 
it was the funniest thing for about two years. I used to get her messages on my phone. And she was already back in the UK. Please send okay. her a big hug from me. I will. I'm going to do yeah. that now. I'll see and them Taylor, today. I that is that Yeah, yeah. I yeah. will. I'll remind her. <laughs> Please do me a favor. Wait. If you, oh, but she's coming to you on Shabbos. No, no, no. She's going to be. I'm going to see her today as well because we've got. Uh, uh, we we have. A, it's cute. We have her husband's bags still in the house, so I mm. hope he's planning on picking them up. Okay, so take a selfie you and her and send me. Okay. Okay. And send him a good muzzle. I will Very do that. I will do that. See, just some talking. You see? There we go. We're just adding in a little bit of Bar Hashem. So just be simcha, simcha all round for all of Klal Yisrael. For all of Klal Amen. It could be. Just believe it and it will be. It will be. It will be. Amen. 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 Yeah. Hey, good Shabbos, good Shabbos. Okay, good Shabbos, thank you. And uh, we look forward to our next year together in Yerushalayim. That's right. Thank you. That's right.